Good morning. Good morning. Don't panic. Just because we've had a bank holiday, we haven't suddenly jumped to Thursday. It really is me this morning. Um, Tess and I are just swapping around this week. It is Tuesday, not Thursday. And I am with you this morning and Tess will be leading on Thursday. So lovely to see you all. I'm just uh, looking down to see who's with us. We have, oh, surprise, surprise, Tess, who's here with me, Val. Denise, good to see you. Um, there's clearly more people just hiding and not saying hello. So to all 10 of you who are live with us at the moment and to those who I've just mentioned, good morning. So um, we're here again on, isn't it been beautiful, the bank holiday weekend? I don't know what you did. I was gonna say, but here we are on a lovely sunny morning again. I looked at the cards, 18 degrees this morning. I put my tomato plants out yesterday. There was no frost last night. That's not what happened to the first ones. <laughs> Tess, is, uh, Tess is nodding and shaking her head at all the right places. Exactly the same. It's been a funny old year, hasn't it? But hopefully, hopefully the summer is upon us. It's June tomorrow morning, isn't it? Tomorrow, is, oh no, it's June today. It is, it's the 1st of June, of course, bank holidays do throw us a little bit. So we have a lesser festival today, the lesser festival of uh, Justin the Martyr of uh, 165. Um, lots and lots of um, writing about him. I'll tell you a little bit, tell you a little bit. It's born in Palestine but was a Greek by education and upbringing. He was a philosopher. Um, he, s he finally turned to Christianity. There you are. And he was thought of as the first Christian philosopher. I'm looking down to see what it was that he... Uh, so here we are. Here's, here's something that he, um, that he, he... So he argued that Christianity was the true philosophy, philosophy the culmination of all previous philosophies, which only contained partial truth. He was the first Christian writer after Paul, Saint Paul, the one who writes all the letters in the New Testament, to grasp the, univer the universal nature of the gospel. And he was martyred by being beheaded, uh, who, um, because again, like many of them, he refused, refused to offer sacrifice to other gods. So there we are. I did recognise the name and I knew he was a philosopher, but um, I didn't realise that he had, uh, he was the first Christian writer after Paul and I also didn't realise that he had been beheaded. Did you know that, Tess? I'm sure she did. Yes. <laughs> okay. There is, if any of you have the lectionary, there is a, a little write-up on him with some other interesting facts. Um, and also, you can always look these people up on the internet. There is loads of information about them on the internet these days. So let's begin our morning prayer. I've put the link into um, the post for you, so hopefully you can follow that if you'd like to do that. O Lord, open our lips, and our, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies, satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his words. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, 
you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. So let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Start our readings with Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my lamentation. Hearken to the voice of my crying, my King and my God. For to you I make my prayer. In the morning, Lord, you will hear my voice. Early in the morning, I make my appeal to you and look up. For you are the God who takes no pleasure in wickedness. No evil can dwell with you. The boastful cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those that work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful the Lord will abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness, because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. For there is no truth in, my, in their mouth. In their heart is destruction. Their throat is an open sepulchre, and they flatter with their tongue. Punish them, O God. Let them fall through their own devices. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them sing out their joy forever. You will shelter them, so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous, and with your favour you will defend them as with a shield. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Psalm 6 O Lord, rebuke me not in your wrath, neither chasten me in your fierce anger. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am weak. Lord, heal me, for my bones are racked. My soul also shakes with terror. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn again, O Lord, and deliver my soul. Save me from your loving mercy's sake. For in death no one remembers you, and who can give you thanks in the grave? I am weary with my groaning. Every night I drench my pillow and flood my bed with my tears. My eyes are wasted with grief and worn away because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all you that do evil, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. All my enemies shall be put to shame and confusion. They shall suddenly turn back in their shame. Psalm 8 O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, 
what is man, that you should be mindful of him, the son of man, that you should seek him out. You have made him little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the worlds. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. If you heard a movement, that was just Tess getting slightly closer to the microphone, to the uh, camera, because she's going to read Job for us now. Our first reading is from the book of Job, from chapter 8. We continue this long book of Job. Then Bildad the Shuhite answered, How long will you say these things, and the words of your mouth be a great wind? Does God pervert justice, or does the Almighty pervert the right? If your children sinned against him, he delivered them into the power of their transgression. If you will seek God and make supplication to the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, surely then he will rouse himself for you and restore you to your rightful place. Though your beginning was small, your latter days will be very great. For inquire now of bygone generations, and consider what their ancestors have found. For we are but of yesterday, and we know nothing. For our days on earth are but a shadow. Will they not teach you and tell you, and utter words out of their understanding? Can papyrus grow where there is no marsh? Can reeds flourish where there is no water? While yet in flower and not cut down, they wither before any other plant. Such are the paths of all who forget God. The hope of the godless shall perish. Their confidence is gossamer, a spider's house their trust. If one leans against its house, it will not stand. If one lays hold of it, it will not endure. The wicked thrive before the sun, and their shoots spread over the garden. Their roots twine around the stone heap, they live among the rocks. If they are destroyed from their place, then it will deny them, saying, I have never seen you. See, these are their happy days, and out of the earth still others will spring. See, God will not reject a blameless person, nor take the hand of evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Those who hate you will be clothed with shame, and the tent of the wicked will be no more. Not so for poor old Job, and that's why it's such a great book, and that's why I think as uh, student ordinands, it was one of the books that we spent a lot of time picking through and discussing. So our canticle, A Song of Peace. Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of righteous peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations, 
and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. So I'm going to read to you from Romans chapter 4 today, beginning at verse 13. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It is the ad adherents of the law who are to be the heirs. Faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that, he, that did not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he, cons when, when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Our responses. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. So we come to our Gospel canticle. The familiar words of the Benedictus. Please do join in for the whole thing if you would like. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, 
all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I was just very briefly, quite unintentionally, I think both Tess and I, when we talk about uh, prayer and things, and when we do morning prayer, to be fair, I don't always plan to say something. And then you read something in one of the readings and you think, well, maybe I should just say something very briefly. And I was looking at the bit about Abraham in Romans, where a God makes... Abraham, the father of all nations, and you know, it says that Abraham hopes that that is what will happen, but that isn't his prime reason for loving his God and uh, leading his life for God. And I guess there's a little bit of that in Job as well. You know, Job loved God not because of his nice life and his wonderful family and all that, but because he loved God. And Job is very much about, okay, well, if we take all that away from Job, will he still love God? And will he still uh, stay true to God? And Abraham, I think, in a similar way, we are discussing him, or Paul is discussing him in that way. And I do wonder when we often think, you know, are we Christians because of the reward that is waiting for us at the end of our days? Are we Christians because we want everlasting life we want eternal life with God are we Christians because we follow the one true God through good times and bad and I think very often it's a deep faith a very deep faith that will allow people to love the Lord their God and to follow their God not because of what's in it for them but because of that true love for the God that they follow and I think very often um, people will say they lose faith because of something bad that has happened to them in their life. But, you know, as we often read in the Bible um, and in our Psalms today, I, I loved what was the, the middle Psalm, um, Psalm 6, that really is the cry to God when all things go wrong and life feels really unfair. And actually, you know, God is still there for us in those times. He was there for Abraham, because life didn't always go uh, as it should do for Abraham, but Abraham stayed firm to the faith and continued to follow God, not because of what was in it for him, but because he loved his God. So let us pray. Creator God, as we gather here this morning, from wherever we are, we find ourselves joined through your Son, Jesus Christ. So as we pray, let us keep Jesus in the centre of our lives. We give thanks for the world in which we live, for the beauty that surrounds us, whatever that may look like. We give thanks here for the bird song just outside the church, for the wonderful weather, for the slightly clearer roads because of half term.
Help us to see that there is always something that we can thank you for. Even in the depths of darkness, when we feel that we have been completely abandoned, help us to just say thank you to you for being there for us, for supporting us in good times and in bad, for never giving up on us. And as we look around the world, for some it will feel a godless place. But there is always your presence. Always somebody reaching out to somebody else. Even in the most difficult places in the world at this moment. We give thanks for those who reach out to another human being. We give thanks for those who are caring for this amazing creation. We give thanks to those who are trying to live in peace with others. And we give thanks for those who aim for justice for all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church. Let's just take a moment to really focus on the power of prayer. We have G7 starting soon in Cornwall. And let it be our job as Christians to pray into that meeting that all peoples of faith around Cornwall pray for successful outcomes for the world in which we live. That we are mindful of each other's needs. And that our leaders will act with integrity and even some common sense. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray for those who we know need our prayers at the moment. We pray especially for those whom the church prays for and names on the back of our welcome. We pray also for Gillian and for Pauline. We pray for our families, whom we still may not have seen and been able to support as much as we would like. And we pray for our friends. And we pray especially for those who have no one to pray for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember as well those who are struggling with grief at this time. We pray for the family of Paul. And we pray for Susie as she prepares to say goodbye to her mother. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for ourselves, for the life that we lead, for all the things that we feel able to give thanks to God for that are around us. Even though at times that may be difficult, help us to know that you are always with us.
God, our Redeemer, who through the folly of the cross taught your martyr, Justin, the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, remove from us every kind of error that we, like him, may be firmly grounded in the faith and make your name known to all peoples. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So whatever you're doing today, do go out there and enjoy it. Um, coffee morning tomorrow? Coffee afternoon? Coffee morning tomorrow at 11. Coffee morning tomorrow yes. at 11. And then morning prayer with Tess on Thursday. Thursday. We're all a day late, aren't we? This is the only problem with bank holidays. So coffee morning, Wednesday, 11, morning prayer, Thursday, nine o'clock. There we go. And Tess will tell you all about the Sunday services on Thursday, because it's way too soon to tell you about those now. Um, I'm certainly likely to forget. I'm sure Tess is as well. Now we've got more, we've got uh, communion here at St Morgan on Sunday, uh, eight o'clock communion at St Colum, and then even so, Yes, that's me. Yes. Even song in the evening at St Evel. So you've got a choice on Sunday. How amazing Even is that? Even online as well. And online, of course, church at four. Yes, not sure what I'm going to do there, but we shall see. Right, have a lovely, lovely day and enjoy the sunshine. And uh, yeah, we will see you later on in the week. Goodbye. <laughs>